Xin cho bé biên hồ ngã xuất xế nhân ô Bìm xế dù nà nín dù nhu nơ ô chiu ô So kun vi Tiêu tìm chia bè nhé phùi ô Yô thá phá nà chiều Dân kín ơ ô phiêu Biên hồ mê dân kín nà mô hồ kún ô Phun to nan o o fio yam hiu ve pien hung lo la cu o yam hiu hai lo ze tin to sang o. เจ้าตอเวองเยอเปเซียนตาวาเดี๋ยวพาเจียมเอ้ยโอ้ยเจ้าเจ้าเจ้าเจ้าเจ้าเจ้าเจ้าเจ้าเจ้าเจ้าเ
their kids don't come to our house. They don't learn from other people. And as they grow older, they're going to lose all the values. No one ever told these refugees anything about their rights under the U.S. Constitution. And these people in Laos had no rights, okay? They were basically informed in an informal manner that they did not have the same status as human beings, as the mainland people, okay? So they come to America, nobody informs them of their rights. And then other people say, if you want to be an American, and this is a problem we have in our society today, if you want to be an American, you've got to be a Christian. So you have people, some people converting to Christianity, other people basically becoming more or less secular humanists because the demands of this tradition are quite great too. I mean, it costs money to buy pigs and have sacrifices all the time. People don't have the time. So I don't, I really am not quite sure about the viabilities of these traditions in the future. If they change, they can survive. They have to change to some degree. People come here, wasn't planned for them to come here. Um, they have all this dealing with uh, a new country, uh, a tough community, neighborhood that they're living in, um, language, uh, academics, all these different kinds of things. And whatever the norms were back in Laos began to crumble here in the U.S. A big chunk of the young people said, you know, you don't have no money for me, and you don't know what it's really like out here, and we're getting our asses kicked, and, we, you know, we're going to do something about it. Or 90s would just blow up. The gang activity became more intense. No matter where they came from, no matter what country, no matter what state, as long as there were a couple of families, we found each other, we located each other, we started meeting, we started sharing ideas and building building a relationship. We had to try to form a district. And for each district, we have one district leader so they can overlook all the people in the district community. We all knew that if they didn't love their people, no one else would love their people. If they didn't care for the people, no one else would care for their people. And if we didn't want their people to do better, there would be no one else. So we knew of that district leader who had that passion. And from there on, we needed district leaders, we needed good people in the community. And it, this may have happened about 1991, and we started having the district. This, is, this hasn't been a new idea. This is something we also kind of had when we were in our country. We just had to develop it a little bit more when we came here. And I also want to add, like, you know, like district leaders, although we have, like, respect, we have respect for them, we know what their role is, but they're a typical family of the community. So they're not really going out there and have this power mm -hmm. in yeah. showing, like, you know, to the community that threaten in the community. That's not how their role is. Part of the community, the want to be involved, to participate in different things, so they know what's going on. They are viewed that way and they get respect that way. Like where there's disagreements, let's say maybe a family, maybe sometimes it's a father or um, child or grandparent and child, they're, they're not understanding each other. Sometimes where there's not respect amongst children and parents. And Let's say um, our, your son goes and dates a girl and she gets pregnant 
There's so many different things. And sometimes the wife and husbands will get into arguments. And sometimes there's two different district leaders who um, are not seeing eye to eye. With a, a family that is a dis, you know, a, a district leader, is not is not just the the, the district leader. It's mm -hmm. it's a res, the fam, It's a, like it's a, a family, family is becomes a part of that world. Mm -hmm. um, so you're 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 involving the wife. You're involving the children, and um, and. It, it requires a lot of uh, a lot of time and and you know um, and uh, financial contribution for the family too. So uh, I remember my dad used to get calls late at night in the middle of the night to talk to a family member about some issues and things like that. Um, and then and then from there, you know, you're 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 basically like. Um, jotting down mental notes about what the issues are and then you have to call a meeting with all the other district councils um, to come you know come together to discuss it and then you, you bring the people together so it's it's a it can be a little intrusive <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and uh, but and a huge dedication on the part of, of the individual and, and the family because they serve terms so my dad did two terms, so that was eight years. Our mission is really just to, you know, maintain our community, maintain our culture, and just to promote our identity because it's losing. Um, so, you know, having a sense of a, a community where we can always work to create more projects, more programs that can really maintain the culture. You know, these religious practices and these ceremonies and these um, events that we have on occasions that it's a big unifying factor for the community in the sense that Whenever we have these kind of events or these kind of you know religious practices ceremonies going on, it's a big. It's not just you know a, a family, a, you know personal family event, but it's a big community event in the sense that we have members who just who come out to help. Of, of course, there's you know shamans who come out to conduct the ceremonies. Afterwards, people who come out to prepare the feast, and then it's also a big social vessel for people to just communicate. <laughs> Well, this is our 10th annual uh, Union Scholarship Fundraising Banquet. And the purpose is actually to award graduating high school and GED students from California a small grant. It came from the Mian community, you know, it's a, um, a committee that was um, put together in order to address the educational needs of the Yumian youth and to um, basically inspire them to pursue higher education and to um, encourage them to take leadership in the community. สกุลเวเจียวติเจแปเนฟุยอยอทาฟานาติวจวนกินอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอาอ
to like burning the incense to have occasions where we sit and talk about what we do. And from all these people here, if, if, if we weren't talking about being united and needing this type of place like a temple, you wouldn't see any one of these people here dressed. So we're, we, we have a very important history. Um, we've lost a lot of it along the way. So we're almost, I feel like we're priceless people. To buy this property, that was very challenging because of how we raise money to buy the property. And in order to do that is our leader, our elder, um, come together to really to look at the future for our community, where we can uh, find balance in life for our community when we are living with this uh, such a uh, um, material society, how we can find uh, peace in life. Once one thing that I am very grateful is because I have seen the women who have that compassion, who have that love, come together and in a way, in, a, in, a, uh, in the eye of our community, they are a part of the leader. The women leader, they come together to find a direction for our community. Women who are going temple or praying here in the America, uh, this is something really new to our Ilmian community. Back in Laos, we wouldn't have this opportunity because the women, they are behind the scene. The fact that the, the Yumian community has this very well-defined, organized structure, I think is a really important asset that will lend a, a sense of real resource and a sort of a sense of like internal logic and and um, and leadership uh, that many communities don't uh, have the benefit of. And I would I may be taking a stretch here, but you know when people talked about the um, the gang problems that you know many communities face that when it erupted in the 90s between the Richmond gangs and the Oakland gangs, that a young boy um, was killed, innocently killed as a bystander. And the community came together and got involved. And I think that that has really sort of reduced a lot of the, you know, uh, gang tensions. And while there's still gangs, you know, it's, uh, you know, um, a, a sense that, you know, with, LIMCA and the, the kind of organization um, that they have a way to mobilize, they have a way to communicate. I think that that is an important anchor mm -hmm. that um, you know many communities could benefit from. Mm -hmm. Similar to the uh, associations that the Chinese had in the early days of immigration. I know the Japanese community had a lot of sort of mutually mutual support organizations or they used the Buddhist church or the you know um, different infrastructures to provide sort of almost a dual structure, society, you know, uh, societal structure by which they could have some order and, you know, a sense of, um, of survival and, and well-being and, and sort of a place also to ma maintain culture. Uh, in co past couple of years, we have a lot of uh, gang activities, kids dropping out of schools. Every day we hear all kinds of problems now it's kind of eased a little bit, so I am so grateful that we are, we are the Yumian people, so small number of people, but it's making better life here in America. 
I am so thankful for that and we found a lot of hope, a lot of uh, people, uh, not so much, uh, you know, like mental illnesses, depression. There were no people in Laos ever in history who were men who had ever gone to a university. In the space of 30 years, or a generation and a half, you've had a lot of people take advantage of educational opportunities. Right. One indicator of measuring success is you have kids <clears throat> who have become successful and employed in professionals in the United States, and they're taking care of their parents, okay? They're living in their same family. I was the only one that was able to help my parents. Like what Shane was saying, doing all the immigrant stuff for the parents, you know. So for, for a moment, I wanted to go away to college, too. You know, I wanted to go away. But then, like, I realized that, you know, my mom would be so emotional, distressed, because I was the only one that was reliable, and my brother would be, wouldn't be able to help because he would always be in and out of jail, you know. And then my little brother was too young to help, so it was only up to me. So there were moments when I really wanted to go, and I did apply, you know. And then my mom was, you know, she would be always like going emotionally in tears and I kind of felt like it was hard to accept that I, I need to stay, you know, for a while, but then I feel realized, that, okay, I have to stay, you know, so I, that's how I became, that's what I realized, that, okay, this is my duty, you know, <laughs> this is what I have to do for now, but later on I realized that now that I've finished college and then you know, I want to pursue higher education, and, but my mom will always have to realize that I'm going to have to leave sometime, you know. Yeah, so, <laughs> but for now, I'm stopping them, what I can do for now, and then maybe later on my mom will realize that, you know, I have to do what I want to do in my life, you know. I think for me, uh, the strength comes from is my great-grandmother. Uh, she's been, I think, in four generations, you know. She's been, she's 91, and she's still living, and she's still able to see her uh, um, great-great-grandson, my nephew, you know, so that's... Um, it's a, from her story that she shared with me, uh, her um, tribu tribulations, triumphs, her um, life stories uh, of, you know, how she's become a strong woman now. So it's come from her. her strength is from my great-grandmother. <laughs> it's true of African-American and Latino population. I mean, the Native population, Native American, is a clear example of what can be gained um, from the spiritual strength of a people to inform the way uh, one's life is supposed to be lived mm -hmm. and what uh, other group can gain from that. Mm -hmm. um, and the resilience in African-American population mm -hmm. and community, uh, what communities have gone through, how try to, some group try to regenerate uh, the idea of a sense of community. Mm -hmm. If culture is stronger in the sense of building connectivity, uh, and the resources, the culture uh, is there. And I mean, the, there is no, uh, no other way to actually promote positive mental outlook, positive emotion, that building connectivity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, is, if culture is stronger uh, in the sense of that connectivity, then you are going to have a better health outcome. เคลอยู่ลอเนี่ยนักฟังเวลอโอตองโอเป่งเจเวนินเกนน่าเหลียบจอยเนี่ยตินอเปียนาหูเวจางอ Joy Pin Tabe Pian Hong and Ye Kong Yen O Fe Koyelo Joy Taho 
照咯，一大咩？开起那边河，顶哦。心范围哦，当我错大位，也嘛变红方哦，分清哦，这里那问也讲哦。变红为灵魂，天光也为哦，灵那红不要转念哦，嘛喏，一年为变金那千年富哦。Tiêu khá lộ tài, diện khu ơi.